Welcome to Friday Night Likes. My name is Chris Webb, and in this show, I review toy photography from around the web so you can learn how to improve your skills in composition, lighting, posing, scene building, and more. Episode 10, we got here at last. The um, more astute of you who watch the show every, every week, who I'm very grateful for, uh, spotted there was no show last week, I'm sad to say. Uh, life kind of took over a little bit last week, and as a result, uh, yeah, didn't actually get the show out. Um, wasn't just to do with me and what's going on. Uh, I actually struggled to find material last week. I was um, going through my normal process of trying to find stuff that is worth talking about. So trying to find images that have something new in them that I can discuss and talk about. It's not about finding necessarily the best toy photos out there. It's about finding something that you can learn a new technique from. Uh, and last week was just a glut. Plenty of great photos, but nothing that struck me as something that wouldn't be repeating what I've already said in the last shows. So I figured, okay, episode 10, just for a change, all the photos this week are gonna be mine because for me, it's a lot easier to talk to you about my own photos than other people because I can talk to you a lot more about the process of what went into making my own photos, what I was thinking, I can point out mistakes, all these type of things. So I thought episode 10, it'd be fun to just go through some of my work um, and tell you a little bit about uh, these shots. And uh, yeah, you can hopefully learn a little bit from these photos I've selected. So the first shot I've picked out is this shot I did of the Hot Toys Ray and Kylo Ren figures. This was a real quick throwaway shot, literally. Um, I just picked up the Kylo Ren figure. Someone put it up for sale in a, a group here in Australia at a really, really great price. They hadn't even opened the box. And I darted across town and picked this figure up, got it out, and I was like, I've got to take a shot with him and Ray in the same uh, scene. So I threw this together, did the lighting, uh, photoshopped in the savers, bang, that was it. Uploaded this, had great feedback on this photo. P plenty of people love this shot, but the reason I picked it out is because there's so much wrong with this <laughs> from a perspective of the lighting. Uh, it pays to look at things closely and pay very, very special attention to lighting because although this looks nice from, from my point of view, um, because it was quick, it really, really falls down uh, from a perspective of motivated lighting. And what I mean by that is if you follow the light sources in the scene, they don't match up with where the light falls. Um, and this is one of the problems that people who are doing stuff like lightsabers uh, in Photoshop have when they throw things together as quickly as I did here. Because of course, uh, Ray's blade blue, Kylo's blade red are the light sources. They kick out huge volumes of light um, and by photoshopping sabers in like this, you've got to think about these things in advance and think about, well, how am I going to light the characters so that when I do the Photoshop work, it's seamless and it looks like they were there. So just look at Ray's face, like look at the way the light falls. You can tell just from her face alone that how I've lit the scene. There's a light coming from the left and there's a light coming from the right. Now the problem is the axis of the lights doesn't match up with the axis of the sabers because the lighting across her face has this fall off the kind of red orangey glow on one side and the blue and to, a, to an extent white glow on the other side, but it doesn't match up with where these sabers are. Uh, and I knew this and to be honest, I wasn't fussed, I was just like, Here's a quick shot I'm just going to throw out there. But um, it just 
was interesting to me that people reacted to the, to the shot where something like that would be something I'd pick up on very quickly where I'd look at this and go, hang on a minute, those sabers aren't sitting in the scene well. Um, one thing I did do with this, which I'm reasonably happy about, was I started lighting um, on the left with red, and there is a red gel, but what I did was started mixing in orange as well, because the problem with red light is it really, really goes blocky and lacks any depth. And so by mixing in some orange, uh, it just creates some kind of nicer tones. Um, I was looking at some of the artwork, the promotional marketing artwork uh, for The Force Awakens, and uh, there's plenty of shots of Kylo where he does kind of have an orange fall off from his saber. Um, probably the work I've done with his saber in Photoshop doesn't take advantage of that uh, as well as it could because, yeah, I mean, I've noticed, you know, the Photoshop work they do with his saber has a little bit of an orange tint to it as well as the red. Um, but this is something I will definitely revisit when I play with these characters again. I've literally just got this week uh, Finn and a First Order Stormtrooper, so I'm going to start doing more shots with all these Force Awakens Hot Toys uh, figures. Uh, I've got something pretty cool planned coming down the line. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with that kind of blend of red and orange. Blue, you've always got to have much higher power because it is a weaker wavelength than the red. So really overpowered that on the right for her. Uh, there's a white light in there as well to um, prevent the blue going too blocky. Really, really happy with that. But as I say, the main problem here is this sort of motivated lighting uh, inaccuracy, I, I should say, from, from the sabers. So be aware of this. I mean, that would have been easy to fix. Um, another thing you got to think about is directionally, where do you need the light the hottest? So if you look at, say, Kylo's hand, look at his arm like you can see the light is on the left of his arm and the right of his arm but it's not actually on the top which is of course where the saber would be giving off the most light um ray is a little better uh, you know you can see the top of her hands lit up more by the saber um the center of her chest here around the saber is better uh but yeah you've got to think about these things if you're going to do photoshop work um so yeah, that's it for number one. Spent way too much time looking to talking about this, but yeah, that was gonna happen when I'm talking about my own shots. Next one. This was actually set up for a video. So um, promotional video I've got for my course, learntoyphotography.com. Um, I set a few scenes up where I did sort of dolly tracking shots. So the camera kind of moves from left to right and tracks through the shot. And very, very quick shot. The background is actually a monitor. Uh, found this image of a burning factory, whatever it is, on the web, pop that there, characters on screen, bit of stationery up the front, and bang, in goes Batgirl and Harley Quinn, play arts Kai figures. Um, but even though it was shot for video, what I did was take a photo because I thought it looked pretty cool and spent a little bit more time just setting up the composition of this scene. So that's what I want to draw your attention to. So there's a few things here. First, if you look at the background, you've got this big light glowing flame and then you've got this black wall. So I took advantage of that because what I've done is I've put Batgirl in front of that black wall and I've lit her with this very, very hot rim lighting to pop her off of that black background. So it really, really makes you focus on her rather than her just bleeding into the background. Very, very deliberate the way she's lit. Equally, I spent a lot of time moving Harley Quinn's arm so her gun was on that kind of white hot spot because that then does the reverse, if you like, in that it focuses your eyes on the gun and how um, much contrast there is 
between the gun and the background. I've talked about the greatest areas of contrast in your photos before. And so this is what you want to think about. This one isolates the gun with the black against the white. And then the rim lighting of her helps uh, with that dark background there. Uh, the rim lighting on Batgirl, I think I put a red gel on. I was thinking maybe, you know, you the flames would give off a bit of red. It's actually kind of wandering into more pink magenta, um, which doesn't work so well, but, you know, being picky. There's another light source separate from that rim light hitting Harley on the right, and this is motivated lighting done well because what that does is it makes you think she is lit up by the fire. So the light from the fire is what's creating that rim light round you know, the edges of her. So you believe she's in the scene. So I'm a lot happier with this shot from a perspective of the lighting setup than I was with that Ray and Kylo shot. So just an example of the kind of thing I think about when I'm doing these uh, photos and how I set them up. Okay, next one. Next one, kind of the same thing. So uh, this was exactly the same setup, the monitor in the background. This was another shot from the video. Uh, found this best bin shot online. And what I did was pop the figures on the scene. These are all six scale figures. And then started to think about, well, I want to match the lighting of the background with the lighting on uh, the figures here. So you can see if you look at the background, even though it's out of focus, you've got light coming from the right. There's clearly some kind of sunset that's hitting this building. And so I needed that hitting the side of Fett here. You can see this is a stormtrooper here. It's hitting the side of his head and the back and to an extent Vader here as well. It's just picking up uh, some of his mask there. That puts them in the scene. Um, then what I wanted to do was just create another different light source for the left side and this obviously isn't um, the uh, atmospheric light. You can assume this is a light from a doorway, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't match the, I guess, tonal light in the scene. But it just creates some contrast um, and some interest around this figure rather than just having the same kind of uh, lighting tone on it. And gives a pretty nice result. I'm pretty happy with this. The other thing about this is something I'm doing more and more and more with my photos, which is having framing where there's stuff hugging the edges of the frame. So I very, very deliberately put Vader right at the edge and the Stormtrooper right at the edge. And what that does is it pulls you through the gap between them and focuses you on Fett. If this was just a shot of Fett against Bespin, you'd be like, I've just put Fett on a table and put him in front of a Bespin background. Not very interesting. Just by putting these two figures at in frame and out of focus, it sucks you in. You're now in the story because you know there's some kind of dialogue, some conversation going on between these. And it's a totally different photo. And it's no, it's nothing more than just popping two figures in, in scene. Um, this is what I keep going on about every week, about how simple it is to create a little bit of story and a li little bit of dynamics in your photos uh, just by taking advantage of the depth in the shot and what you can put behind and in front of your uh, subject to tell a story. So that's that one. Next one, uh, this, st yeah, sticking with the Star Wars theme, this Death Star escape shot here. This was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, this playset is an old Power of the Force, Power of the Jedi, I don't remember which line from Hasbro, set they sold um, of the, you know, the Death Star uh, detention cells. It's actually only got one side to it, so the side that they're kind of pulling Leia out of her prison cell is the side that, well, is effectively what's designed to be played with. There's nothing on the other side. So where the trooper and the uh, space wall behind him is covering that up, it's covering up the fact that there's a gap there, uh, which is also very useful for putting in a great big light and 
lining up the figures from from the left side. So there's a lot going on in this scene. Um, Playset there, obviously, Hand, Luke, Leia in the center. Chewie on the right. I'm going to come back to him in a second. The background is actually the cardboard um, card back from one of these figures. Uh, I think it was just a vanilla stormtrooper, but it's just that corridor sort of going into infinity. And I was like, this is perfect. I can put this in the scene. It's going to almost give the illusion that you're looking all the way through this um, Death Star detention cell corridor. Um, there's a big problem with perspective, obviously, because if you look at it in detail, you can see the floor these guys are standing on is kind of flat at this angle. And then, whoa, it goes up crazy angle here and really doesn't work at all. Um, so it doesn't stand up to scrutiny from that perspective. I actually made a mistake that I didn't see when I shot this. Uh, there was actually a little white border from the from the cardboard, which I've done a really sloppy Photoshop job of trying to uh, extend a mask out. But that's um, really the only place this falls down for me. Um, I actually reshot this, but I wasn't as happy with the reshoot. Um, what I did was bring the Stormtrooper's gun up, uh, his blaster here, so it covered up that gap, so you effectively didn't see that transition. Um, talking to Stormtroopers, obviously one of the big things here is mixing scale. So figures at the back, these four are all 3.75 inch. This Stormtrooper on the right is a six inch black series Stormtrooper and then the Stormtrooper right at the front here is a sixth scale uh, Sideshow Stormtrooper figure I got way back in the day. Um, they're all quite close together. That's what gives this effect of them all being in focus and it looking what I like to think of as kind of a comic book cover. That's kind of the style I like to shoot. I like to sort of compress everything together and not have stuff too out of focus. Uh, that's, that's kind of my thing. Um, really, really good example of framing. This is exactly what I was going for when I planned this shoot. I wanted this concept of a frame within a frame within a frame. You've obviously got the frame of the corridor, these guys in the middle, the frame of the edge, uh, and then the stormtrooper here frames these guys again, and then the stormtrooper here frames them again, and it draws you right through. Uh, another thing I did with the reshoot was I positioned the corridor background so that white was right behind Luke's head, um, which I thought just balanced the shot a little bit better. Uh, didn't really make that much of a difference. Um, color, color is another important thing. The middle is more saturated, so the contrast between the lights and darks is, is, is more vibrant, I suppose, in, in the middle with these characters, the light side, if you like. You come to the edge, and with the exception of the sort of front of this Stormtrooper's mask, it desaturates. So the edges are way, way, way more desaturated and obviously have those cooler blue tones than the center does. Another thing I did, the actual detention cell itself, there's a kind of doorway here that Leia's stepping out from. Big red light coming out of that. So just a kind of effect to sort of show she's coming from, she's stepping out of this area that's red danger, if you like. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So that's the thinking that went into this little shot. And then the last one I've pulled out is kind of a similar thing in terms of framing. So this is all about Ula, Jabba's dancer from the start of Return of the Jedi. All this stuff is sixth scale. Uh, there's a video for this on my YouTube channel that uh, does a little set tour so you can see the, this uh, in more detail. But this is this massive sixth scale Jabba figurine and um, throne thing they uh, sold back in 2005, I think, maybe I picked it up. Wasn't cheap then, but way cheaper than stuff is now. And then I got everything. I got Bib Fortuna, I've got all the creatures, Gamorrean God, you name it. Jawas that recently came out from Sideshow. God, it's literally been 10 years I've been waiting for a Jawa so I can stick a little palm in his hand and have him keeping Jabba cool. But there you go. 
it's a it's a long term play toy photography. Ula herself is a, a gentle giant bust. Um, I love doing stuff like this, mixing in statues with articulated figures, because what you get with statues that you don't get with figures is an expression captured. So statues can capture facial expressions. Um, muscle, think about muscle. You, you, you don't really get any kind of figures that have muscle that's tense or extended or contracted in a way that makes you look at it and, th and know what kind of movement the figure's doing. A figure's got to articulate so you can't really design any tenseness into um, muscles to indicate they're moving a certain way. But with a statue, the sculptor can think about those kind of things and nail them because it's just freezing a moment in time. This Ula bust is fantastic because she's obviously giving this look and everything about it, you know, her, her posing, how it's been captured and position of her is very, very dynamic. So putting her in this scene and then having all these other characters around her leering over her dance for me works very, very well. Uh, something I'm going to revisit with many of the other gentle giant busts I've got. Trying to do shots of them surrounded by other characters. Not quite sure uh, how many of them I'm going to pull this, be able to pull this off for, but I've got um, one in mind already that hopefully I'll get out in the next few weeks. So composition through colour is something I talk about with this one. Obviously, she's very vibrant, light in the middle, um, got that kind of green tone to her skin, which pops her out the scene. And then everything else kind of has this dark green teal tone in the shadows. And you've got a little bit of warmth in there. There's, there's some sort of brown, orangey tones throughout the back. Um, but then up the front, where you've got Bib, Jabba, and another Jawa here. This would be the, the palm-waving Jawa, Jawa, who's leaning around Jabba to take a look. Uh, I actually had a red light down the bottom, so that's just putting this sort of faint uh, underglow around all of those guys, just to keep it kind of dark and mysterious. Uh, and I'm really, 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 really happy with the shot. It's um, one of my favorites in terms of atmosphere and the way that those darker moody colors slowly frame in and then reveal you know the more vibrant lighter colors of her in the middle this was a lot of playing around um, a lot of minute changes to the figures moving things around getting it just right uh, not easy to do and then i guess the last thing i did was i uh, put a lot of smoke behind her, so that kind of creates more of a hazy effect. Something I do a lot, put smoke in the background of shots. What that does is it diffuses your um, background figures, scenery, and separates them more from your subject. Uh, there's the shot I did of Luke and Obi-Wan in the um, cantina with Han and Chewbacca, same thing. It just creates a bit of separation. So there you go, that's the last one, and I've managed to talk about my own shots for a good 20 minutes, which wasn't the plan, but there you go. Hopefully you got something valuable from them. So that's it for this week. Uh, next week we will hopefully return to normal programming uh, and feature a lot more of you guys and your shots. So I will just end this show with a quick plug of my course where you can find out a lot more about how I go about shooting photos, setting up scenes, and you can find out all about that at www.learntoyphotography.com. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Head to toyshooter.com to join our newsletter and get my free guide to toy photography. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube using the link below. When you subscribe, look for this option to be notified whenever we upload new tutorials. Otherwise, videos will probably get lost in your feed here on YouTube. To see my work on Instagram, you can follow our account at instagram.com slash we shoot toys, where you'll also find some exclusive behind the scenes videos. You can also get regular news and updates from our Facebook page at facebook.com slash toyshooter. 
As with YouTube, you can get notified whenever I upload news or photos by clicking on that like button arrow, then selecting all notifications. You can always change this later if I'm posting more cool stuff than you can handle. Here are all those links again. See you next time.